We've had divided governments in the past. Everyone said it's never been worse, but yet they fixed it. They got better. That was the American can-do way. All right, so we want Congress to feel the heat, but see the light. Let's make Congress work. Congressman Michael Grimm joins us, a Republican from New York, and Congresswoman Terry Sewell, a Democrat from Alabama. And good to have both of you with us. And I'm, I'm glad you're smiling after that intro. I mean, I was, you know, but, but you all know it is what it is. And you're sitting here, a Democrat and a Republican. Are you going to work together? I think that one thing I've learned as a freshman is that it's uh, really important to collaborate. Collaboration is really important. You know, I have hope because uh, in Alabama, my delegation had to come together after the April tornadoes, Republicans and Democrats, in order to uh, provide for disaster assistance for our constituents. So I think that that hope springs eternal. And there's no question, I can tell you right next to one of my favorite freshman colleagues, uh, regardless of what side of the aisle I may be standing on at the time, uh, you know, she, she's great. We've had many conversations on the floor, and it's, it's the process that needs to happen. Listen, we're a polarized nation right now. No one can deny that. And it's our job to get this country back together. I'm willing to do it. I know that my colleague is, and, and this is a new year. It's an opportunity for us to overcome our challenges and put our country first, and I'm very excited to get to work to do that. All right. I am, too. All right. I love it. I was just keep that sound bite because now I feel elated and, and happy. But, but in all seriousness, this is going to be a tough year. It's an election year. Uh, and Representative Grimm, a lot of people from your party ha have come out recently. Uh, you know, last week the president said, hey, you know what? I want to get rid of uh, six agencies and make them one. And some people in your party said, well, you know what? We want to do a whole lot more than that. And so we're not even going to give you that. We're not going to give you anything. And that really came off as, well, more of the same and bad spirited. Uh, what are you going to do about that? Well, first of all, I think that part of the frustration, at least on the Republican side, is that we've put a lot of these initiatives on the table already. If you look at many of the bills that passed the House, a lot of it deal with these things. There's a lot of duplicative, uh, redundant things that we said we should consolidate, you know, going back to the beginning of last year. So it's a little frustrating that it, it at least feels like the president is taking some of those initiatives, dusting them off and you now saying they're his own, and we're supposed to support it. But why didn't we support that all year long? So that's a little bit of frustration. But at the, at the end of the day, I think we're going to work together, and I think we're going to get it done. So you will get it done. All right, so let me ask you about um, this, this debt ceiling issue. Uh, Representative Graham, you again. Um, so obviously, as part of the deal last summer, uh, the debt ceiling is going to go up. But, but you have a chance to cast a ceremonial vote disapproving of it. Um, and, and you're going to cast it disapproving, right, in your case? Yes. Now, why is that? Why not just say, you know what, we all know we have to do this. That could be a really good way to make a goodwill gesture. Well, I, I think that because the negotiations up to this point haven't been complete will. The other thing is, I think that most Republicans, and I think a lot of my colleagues on the other side, realize that we are facing an out-of-control debt crisis, and we haven't been able to really get that under control. We still have not put a plan forward that the rest of the world deems credible, let alone the United States. But I agree with you, Aaron. You know, I think that they're playing political games. I think at the end of the day, we, we have to raise the debt ceiling because America pays its bills. You know that, I know that. And I think that, you know, having a resolution on the floor just to vote no uh, about raising the debt ceiling when you know that we have to work together to do so is to me just brinkmanship. And, and I respect that. I respect that opinion. I really do. But at the same time, America pays its bills, but America has been living way above its means for so long that if we continue on that, we are about three years away from Italy. So right. we know but what's happening in Europe. You Let's Don't you think you've made that point, Representative Gim, before? I mean, I think we all know that. And frankly, that, you know, the Tea Party contributed to that awareness of the debt problem. For but sure, they deserve credit for that. But what we but know it, we and know this it, is going to pass anyway. But okay, if which... we know it, why aren't we dealing with it? So this is another step to say, you know what? We've been fighting all year long to really control the debt and to put a plan in place that deals with it, but we've yet to do that. So I think it's not just ceremonial. It's a reminder to America. It's a reminder to the president that we're living above our means. We're spending money we don't have, and we're borrowing from nations like China, and we're putting ourselves in a debt crisis that we might not be able to get out of, and we have to continue to ring that bell to say, wake up, America. We've got to get a handle on this. So I think that's what it's about. Okay, Super Committee, though, was charged with doing just that and failed. What will each of you agree to that might upset set your party that you would agree to to deal with that problem, right? We know there's a problem. Um, if you want, I'll take it first. Go for it. Well, one of the things I did was join Go Big. That's a group that is bipartisan, bicameral, that is working, you know, day and night on the policy and the procedure to do a real, you know, something tangible, something the world is going to say, okay, that makes sense, whether it's $4 billion, uh, $4 trillion, $5 trillion, I don't know the number, but it's a big number. And what I promise, and I'll promise my colleague right now on TV, is that anything you put on the table, 
I agree not to demonize or just shoot down. It's, it doesn't mean I'll agree with it, but I'm not going to, you know, make fun of you or in any way put you down because of your ideas. And that's what I would hope we can, we can do this year is at least listen to each other. And I know I can with you, but we need to do it as parties and conferences that we're not going to demonize each other's ideas. We're at least going to listen to them and work together, even if we disagree. I agree with you. Listen, I, I think that we agree on this issue, which is collaboration and working together uh, for a common cause. I think that uh, for me, I have joined a, a bipartisan caucus as well, the Common Cause. It was a group of freshmen, both Republican and Democrat. And we're, gonna, we're committed to working together uh, to solving some of our nation's biggest problems. And so I look forward to working with you, Michael, and I'll, I'll take you up on that offer about working together. If there were more members like you, we'd have all the problems uh, worked out. Already. I mean, are you guys getting married or something? You're you got the matching outfit? This is a love fest. I just, we're going to hold to admit, you to this tonight. I asked, but she said no. <laughs> My mom's watching. <laughs> All right. Thanks to both of you. We appreciate it. As we said, we'll, we'll hold, it, hold you to it and have you back. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Wisconsin.